special guest on. I'm very thrilled to let you all know that I have with me today Larry Sparks. Now, Larry, if you don't know his ministry and you don't understand anything about what he does, I, and most of you should because of the reaches that God's given him and what he's doing, I encourage you show somebody this broadcast, invite somebody to it, or please pay attention to what the Lord's going to do through this broadcast and touch you. You know, Larry is a tremendous friend and a, and a gifted communicator and truly working in an anointing that's impacting the culture right now in a tremendous way. And so, Larry, Welcome to the broadcast today. Thank you for being here. Oh, Joseph, it's a joy to be with you anytime. And, you know, every time I think of you, I think of the whiteboard. Obviously, <laughs> we work very closely with Lance Wallnow, also one renowned for the whiteboard. In fact, I'd never seen a situation where a man walked into a room and they brought in the whiteboard and the people cheered for the whiteboard. <laughs> but you know what, Joseph, that speaks of a real prophetic deficiency we have. We need people who are not only able to prognosticate and predict, that's that's part of it, but who are able to release supernatural strategy. Lance is one I've known who's done that for many years, but you're really carrying that mantle for the prophetic community. So I honor you as a prophet, but I also recognize you as a teacher. And we always have a delight when we get to come together and have sessions of revelation. So this will be great. It's true, Larry. You know, we, we call Lance Uncle Lance around here. Uncle Lance, he's kind of the, the leader in the whiteboard space. And so I just really appreciate him and how much we've all learned from, from Lance's ministry. You know, and Larry, last time I had you on, we had so many testimonies. And this is, again, what I want to say to so many of you who are watching right now. Larry has a true powerful revival anointing. And I mean, it will impact you. We all joke that sometimes when Larry begins to go into another space and he begins to become anointed, that it's almost like a different persona comes out. Of course, this is all in, in jest and fun, but uh, we call him Larry Stockton. <laughs> and he, and it's I like, got to tell you. I got to tell the story. That That is a funny story. Tell the story, story. Tell the story in, in, Larry. In, in that I, uh, I do a lot of ministry here at Trinity Church in Cedar Hill, Cindy Jacobs Church. Cindy is my prophetic oversight, but awesome. uh, I was there ministering with Tommy and Miriam Evans, and uh, the pastor at Trinity the next day got up, and he, and he was talking about me, and my heart is just to be a friend of that church. He said, no, we are so grateful for our new friend, Larry Stockton, and <laughs> and all you could hear, you could hear Cindy Jacobs in the front row saying, "Larry Stockton, Larry who is Stockton. that?" So that's when when things go down the t tubes, Larry Stockton comes out. Yeah. Well, that's not what it is. Actually, when when the anointing hits, then people are like, uh, uh, "Here comes Larry Stockton," and like people start oh falling down under the power. Fun. But it's a great story. I appreciate that, Larry. But listen. Last time we had Larry on, we received so many testimonies of people that were impacted not only by the power of God, but they were physically healed. We had people that were greatly impacted by your ministry on our live broadcast. And so I'm thrilled to have you back today because we are coming into a season that's very, very challenging, a difficult time, you know, but it's nothing new under the sun. These seasons repeat themselves, but there is a time we're coming into that is more challenging than I believe we've seen in a generation. And yet the answer remains the same. And Larry, I believe you represent the answer. And, you know, you, you've been moving in a revival anointing and breaking people out. What do you believe is the answer for believers right now, prophetically and with the power of God as we go into this next season? What would you say to that? Oh, goodness. I, I want to say this carefully and clearly. The answer is the supernatural outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The answer has been the same answer for 2,000 years. Come on. You know, I, I always refer people to Acts 2, verse 5 and 6. We, you know, we love Acts 2. That's the outpouring of the Spirit, day of Pentecost. But the thing I always mention when I preach about it is it talks about multitudes coming on the day of Pentecost. We know that multitudes who spoke different languages. Yeah. But you know what drew what drew in the multitudes was not some slick preacher, was not a TED talk, was not, you know, a, a, any kind of, well, we're going to just give you some keys for living and we're going to leave you with a smile. What drew in the multitudes, according to Acts 2, 5 and 6, it says, when they heard the sound, the multitude came. It was the sound of the outpouring of the Spirit. Wow. It's the sound of something in the 21st century that sometimes in the modern church we want to say, we don't want that Pentecostal stuff. We don't want that Holy Spirit stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of conclude this with this thing, um, Joseph, because I do. I feel like there's going to be a little bit of a prophetic swirl here. I do today. too. I feel it coming. 
per perhaps more than last time. But I, I, I will say this to those who think, you know, young people or those who don't know Jesus, they don't want that unusual Holy Spirit stuff. They don't want to see people shaking or falling on the ground. They're not ready for it. That's a little too much. So we, we really sanitize our meetings. That's a lie. And I'll tell you why it's a lie. I'm going to say it flat, flat out. Listen, your intentions are good. We, we, we don't want to offend people. We don't want to, we don't want to push them away. But I just watched, Joseph, and to me, this is a real prophetic sign of what God's doing. For two weeks at Jensen Franklin's church, Free Chapel Church, um, a mega church, a mega church uh, that, that, you know, seats, I don't know, three to 5,000 people. Night after night, Perry Stone was the evangelist there who was leading the meeting. Love Perry. He was up there praying in tongues, leading people in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. People were actually being overwhelmed by the presence and power of God wow. so much so. He said, listen, if you feel like you're going to fall out under the power of God because of the uh, room restrictions, in other words, there's so many people coming to the altars, they couldn't all fit. He said, just literally get on your knees before the Lord. Wow. Um, so I, I say all that to say, night after night, the crowds did not decline. They increased. And every night, Perry got up there, a radical Church of God, Cleveland, Holy Ghost preacher. We know good old Perry Stone. He did not clean things up. He didn't sanitize things. I mean, I said, Joseph, it was like watching the kinds of meetings that me, Tommy, and Miriam Evans do in that the yes. power of God was present. And night after night, young people particularly came forward to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues. So in other words, People right now, what is the solution? What is the answer? We cannot be compromised or quiet about the need and the utter necessity of the Holy Spirit. And I got to tell you guys, and you're watching right now, please repost this, please share this. We're about to get into some good stuff. Um, one of the things I enjoy about you, Larry, is the company you keep. I really do enjoy being around oh. you, Tommy, and Miriam. And anytime we get to rub elbows and shoulders with you guys, we enjoy being with you so much. And your meetings, the three of huh. you specifically, together. Now, many of you who are watching right now and you, you see Larry, you know, he's married to Mercedes Sparks, who is his wife and just a wonderful voice in our generation. And Larry really is kind of like a hub of connections and bringing the revival uh, movement to the world right now. But when you're with Tommy and Mary M., I believe that the Spirit of the Lord does unusual things in your meetings. I've been in some of the meetings after you've been there. I've walked into places and people are like, you should have seen what just happened here. <laughs> and so tell us about that. What is the, the Lord moves in unique ways in your meetings. And I believe that's part of the answer for unraveling some of this crisis fatigue, Larry. What's that like? How's God working through you and bringing revival to a generation? The the. Three of us prioritize one thing above all else. We, now we did, we have different gifts, um, but our priority is the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. In other words, we, we navigate the meeting, we build the meeting, we plan the meeting to orient around one thing. It is not to please people. It is not to make people comfortable, although we love people. It really is to please and make the Holy Spirit comfortable. So we have learned you've got to pivot at any moment. So we do all the normal things. There's praise and worship, but there's there's a prophetic ear on the three of us. Okay, at any moment, the Holy Spirit, it's not that he might speak. He will speak. He will direct. And we've got to go in the directions that he's leading. So what often happens are accidental miracles. Because again, our <laughs> supreme value is the glory, the manifest presence of Jesus. So, I mean, typical miracles will happen. We're in the atmosphere. People will literally start getting healed in the environment. And we'll do a time of testimony. And we'll wow. encourage people, kind of like Benny Hinn does, come up to the stage. Yeah. And people will testify. Stories like this. Hey, I came to the meeting. I wasn't even looking for a miracle. I had hearing aids in. All of a sudden, something started to sound weird. I was just there to worship Jesus. I took out my hearing aid and I could hear perfectly. God wow. healed me. We've heard testimonies of people getting he healed of cancerous lumps, going into the bathroom, checking their body, and those cancerous lumps were gone. There was, a, there was a child, well, last one, there was a child who came to one of the meetings who, um, oh goodness, he had all sorts of neurological issues because he was beaten, sadly, so oh, severely wow. when he was little. Um, he could not run. There's certain movement that he was impaired in, and there was wow. a moment 
where the presence of God, again, notice the common denominator, God moving in power. We weren't even going after healing at the moment, but I remember Tommy and Miriam, I was there that night. This kid comes and starts running around on the stage. Now, wow. for old time classical Pentecostals, we're not necessarily put off by runners. And no. sometimes you'll have Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. You've seen it. Oh, where yeah. Holy Spirit will fall on somebody and they'll just have to run. But this kid came up on the stage, started to run around. And then, of course, interviewing um, the, the parents who were with him, the people who were with him saying, listen, you don't understand. This is a miracle. He could not do this. And in fact, that impairment has Come been on. healed. And it was just, again, a notable miracle to where, in fact, one of the sides of his face, I think it also impaired his vision, his vision was healed. So there's just a few examples where in the presence of God, where people encounter the power of the Holy Spirit, we see people getting healed, delivered, and set free. Larry, you know, you have what Acts talks about with Paul, where they said unusual miracles happen through Paul, even like handkerchiefs or things that came off his body. I believe that you carry that. I really do. I even sense it now. And I sense this for our audience, that as you're listening to Larry, there's a power of the Holy Spirit that's going to begin to get on you as you're listening to Larry right now. Listen to me. If you need healing in your body, you need to reach out yeah. and take it. If you need to receive something from, from the Lord, I'm telling you, there's a miracle, special way making anointing here. And I want you just to stretch out by faith. Larry, I mean, just be led of the spirit here. I am feeling the Holy Ghost. He is here. There's so many things we could talk about, but yeah. sometime I got to oh, get no. you, Tommy, and Miriam on here, and we need to go for Joseph, it. Joseph, you, you just need to pause on that because you what you literally just brought up, this is a one of my favorite verses is in Acts. I, I, and I, right now, we just want to pause on this. The presence of the Lord is falling. I, I sense it. We can't hype it. We can't manufacture it. He's falling on people. I actually believe you're going to have to check your body in a minute. We're not going after healing, by the way. We are not pursuing healing, but he's going to heal you because his prow, his presence is increasing and it's intensifying. Oh, it's strong. Acts 19 talks about unusual miracles, extraordinary miracles. We're done through the Apostle Paul. And Joseph commented because people would take um, pieces of Paul's clothing. These were not prayer cloths. You got to get it. These were not prayer cloths. I believe in prayer cloths. They were pieces of his clothing, sweatbands that he wore while doing everyday life. And they take these pieces of clothing and put them on the sick and the demonized. Come on. Why? Because Paul was so saturated Jesus. by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yes, that, Lord. Joseph, is what you're picking up on right now. That's what oh, I'm it's... sensing. It's I love the healings. I love the miracles. I love the deliverance. God, let it increase even now. But my prayer is that the Holy Spirit would rest on you in Jesus' name to where, just like Paul, there would be that physical manifestation of his presence on you. That is what caused the extraordinary miracles and the unusual miracles. I I'm impressed by the miracles. But I'm yeah. more impressed. Please hear my heart. I'm more impressed that it's possible to be that saturated by the Holy Spirit. Wow. It's like the the anointing carries some kind of transferable ability that God places on people in endowment. And that comes from spending copious amounts of time with the Lord. And that is what you're talking about. And Larry, you, you carry that. And I don't mean to keep emphasizing this, but the reason uh -huh. I do is because as you're watching, ladies and gentlemen, and you're watching this, I've been in the presence of these meetings. I've been around Larry when he's ministered. And I'll tell you, there is a real tangible power. It's the working of the evangelist. It's the working of the fivefold ministry. And it's beginning to move right now. Larry, I feel an yeah. anointing on you over people's lives, over business leaders, over people that are in contentious scenarios. I sense that you have an ability to untangle the net, untangle the mess. It's like an anointing that will unravel enigmas, not even just prophetically, but even in physical anatomy, in a, a financial deficits. I see a major turnaround anointing that you bring into places. And I just sense it now for people that are watching. I'm telling you, you want to share this, repost it, because I know the Lord is going to begin to touch people. I am, I am being touched by the power of God right now on this broadcast. Hallelujah. Larry, please. Well, I can't take credit for it because here's here's the deal, uh, and we joke about it. Uh, most of my miracles that happen as a result of Larry's ministry, uh, number one, it's all Jesus. Number Amen. two, I can't get boastful because they're all, that they are accidental. Can I tell you about a fun <laughs> one? I mean, literally. But but this is my ministry. Is this? If I had to describe myself, and I would have never described myself this way, um, 
But you know, I, I really feel like my heart is that of like a Frank Bartleman or a, a Daniel Nash, an intercessor for revival. I want to see your prayer life infused on, with the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And my heart above all is the presence of God, that you would know him not as an idea concept or a theology. He would be near, he'd be real. I'll never forget, Joseph, I preached at the local diocese of the Catholic Church. No joke. In Palm Beach, Florida, they invited me there because they actually have a whole uh, charismatic ministry. They were all going through Randy Clark's <laughs> teaching. I know, it's, it's wild. They, they come to our meetings. And I, listen, if people invite me from that wonderful community, I will go because I will preach the same Absolutely. Jesus I'm preaching to you, brother. So <laughs> I went in there. And li listen, I've never seen such a thing where, again, I mean, it was an old school Catholic cathedral. There was somebody playing the piano. There's a good group of people there that night. And then the person on the piano, God bless them, they started praying, let it rain. They just started playing. Nobody sang anything. They just really? started to play. And the presence of the Lord increased and intensified. And by the time I was done ministering, we're like, we, we've just got to go into ministry time. Uh, they mobilized their ministry teams. The presence of God was thick. And to make a long story short, out of that time where we all experienced undeniably the touch of God's presence, there was a lady who came in with a walker and she didn't need the walker anymore when she went out because, <laughs> because in his presence, in his, oh, I feel it now. In his presence is fullness. In his presence is joy. Thank in his Jesus. presence is healing. I Thank think of what the, uh, the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome. He said, you know, the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's I want right. you to get that. The Come kingdom on. of God is in the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? When Holy Spirit comes with his presence and power, the jurisdiction of God shows up. The reign of God shows up. The government of God shows up. And what does the government of God look like? Well, you get a glimpse of it in the scriptures. You get a glimpse of it in heaven. Everything that's normal in heaven becomes normal and released in the earth when the government of God shows up in an atmosphere and it's the Holy Spirit who releases that government. And guess what? Holy Spirit's not a mist. He's not a cloud. Uh, he may manifest unusual ways, but he lives in you. So bottom line, brother, sister, you carry the government of God wherever you go. And there are certain things I prophesy that because you are walking into an atmosphere yes, or environment, you carry his government and reign. That means certain things are illegal because you have brought God Almighty into that atmosphere. Well, praise God. I'm, I'm having a good time here. I am too, Larry. I've, I Woo. sense the power of God. And, and for those of yes. you who are watching, please partake of this because, you know, you got to catch it when you sense the spirit there. You got to begin to step into it by faith. Even right now on the broadcast, yeah. I brought Larry on because Larry is a courier and a carrier of the presence of the Lord. And that comes from a place of intercession. And I encourage all of you to begin to tap into that. And even as we're right here right now, I sense somebody I sense somebody that there, more, there's several of you watching this right now, that there's going to be a release of different shackles where you've been mm. bound to yes. people. You've been bound to people, not even just with fear of man, but it's almost like legal entanglements. There's been obligation entanglements. There's been word entanglements. There's just entanglements. And I see people that are leveraging you the wrong way. Many of you watching and the Lord is releasing you. He's releasing you of wrong relationship, of wrong uh, alignment. And I see God setting people free. There's an anointing for this. And Larry, I see this coming. You're, you're a torchbearer that's going to carry so much to a generation and begin to hold Hold it high and light the fires uh, on fire in the, the body of Christ, specifically fivefold ministers that have been dry, not known what to do, not known where to go. And I see them getting awakened. I'll tell you, it, it's powerful what I sense right now. People need what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Joseph. You know, I'm just thinking immediately, uh, you and I, it hasn't been released yet, but you and I did a video about 2024. Yes. That's and right. I just felt the hovering presence of the Lord on Come that on. thing, Larry. Just, just mention that because it's a conversation. This, this is one of the things that I love is when we come together as prophetic people, you know, Come on, Larry. There, there's a lot of goo. I don't have time to talk about the goofy stuff happening right now in the <laughs> prophetic movement. And listen, no. we publish the prophets. I love prophets. Me too. I'm accountable 
to a, a, a whole group of prophets. Um, so I love the prophetic, but at the same time, we want that which is pure. We want that Amen. which is holy. Amen. And I find, Joseph, there's something unusual that happens when maybe a couple of prophets come together, uh, submitted to one another. And come say, on, hey, we're going to hear Holy Spirit together. That's what happened in this video we did. You were sharing. You drew this picture. Oh. <laughs> That'll be fun. I, I can't <laughs> wait to share that. Uh, but I, I, I will I will give you all a sneak preview. At one point, you drew a picture of like a tornado, of a whirlwind, because you were honestly evaluating where we are and where we're going right now. There are dark times ahead. There, there yeah. are. If, can I just say, if any prophet tries to tell you right now, everything is coming up roses, it's all good. Oh, you know, yes, I believe God's got this. But if they're trying to tell you basically everything is fine, peace, peace, it really is like the days of Jeremiah where false prophets were That's literally right. prophesying out of sync with time. I just got to say that they were not sensitive to the times and seasons, and they were basically not prophesying according to what they heard from heaven, from the counsel of the Lord. They were not even prophesying. They were literally, see, I, I believe some just through the flesh and even some through manners of witchcraft and divination, they were wow. recognizing what was, I feel that, 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 I didn't plan to talk about this, but I just want to say, Larry. this is they, good, they, come on. They recognized what was in the hearts of people and they were literally, they weren't prophesying the word of the Lord. They were literally reading people and saying, let's tell the people what they want to hear. That, my friend, is not the prophetic. The prophetic no. has the ability, well, it, well, you know as well as I do throughout the Old Testament, there was a lot of hard prophetic words, uh, and it goes right back to what we're talking about. Yeah, there's a time of darkness. There was times of captivity. There was times of rebellion. But the hopeful voice of the Lord always thundered and said, if always. you would return, always, if you will return, if you will repent, uh, there would be refreshing. If you would return, who knows? If not only you will experience restoration, I think of the book of Joel, but I would turn and leave a blessing behind, which Woo! I believe is new revival. So the, the, the bottom line is, as we're talking about these things, about a, a whirlwind or a tornado of darkness, don't let a prophet come before you and just tell you everything is good. No, things are difficult. They're going to be difficult, but in the middle of it, God is moving. So I'm going to turn it over to you there so we well, can just dial when, up. when I was on the board, just to understand to everybody, when I was on the board in this video that Larry will release, and you need to see, you need to follow Larry. You need to go to his Facebook page, go to his platforms, wherever you can find Larry Sparks. I encourage you to follow. But I oh, drew this baby. tornado on the board, and Larry spoke, and he spoke the word revival in the middle of the storm and it shot through me and Larry that was a it was like a prophetic convergence moment we yes. had a true prophetic unification and the Lord spoke and I believe in the middle of this storm is going to come an unconventional yeah. yoke busting revival that mm. will involve signs wonders miracles but the presence of God is there and that's what I see so mightily uh, in this and so thank you for sharing Larry I wanted to ask you this question this is important with what yeah. is coming because I, I want to share this even for the coming year and all of that, even as we're watching live right now. What has the Lord shown you anything? Do you sense anything? And I don't like to box it into 2024 or the next year only, but do you sense something coming next in the season ahead that you can equip, forewarn, encourage? Is there a word you have that you'd like to share to the audience? I'll say it briefly because it's more of a word uh, from the collective of the prophets that yeah. Cindy gathers together, but it so resonates with me. And I, I think you know, I just had a piece of it. But, um, you know, many were describing 2023 almost as a Psalm 23 period of time where a lot of people were literally going through the valley of the shadow of death. They were getting to know Jesus. They were getting to know the Lord as the shepherd who walks them through difficult times. <laughs> but a lot of the prophets and what resonated most with me is Tommy Evans, who really shared this with me, and I said, yes, this is this is the word of the Lord. Amen. Uh, that we are seeing a shift from Psalm 23 to Psalm 24. Mm. In that, as we go into 2024, and I agree. I, listen, some people can get really goofy about, well, this, this word is for this month or this day, and yet sometimes that can happen. We believe that. I, I, right? I do, but we don't want to time stamp it too much, but I, I do sense there is a connection with this 2024, Psalm 24, where bottom line is, Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Open up your ancient doors. 
and let the king of glory come in. Let me interpret what I feel like the Holy Spirit saying is God is pouring out his spirit right now. Not, not tomorrow, not in 2024. He's doing it right now. But I, I say this with uh, care. I say it with caution. But I also say it with uh, desperation. I believe pastors and leaders are the doorkeepers or gatekeepers of revival in their cities, oh, in their churches. Le- ministry leaders are. And we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to, because Holy Spirit's hovering. He's brooding, he's moving in measure. He is looking for the one, he's looking for the few who will say, Holy Spirit, you come and do what you wanna do. You come and do what you wanna do. Do you know what that comes with? You know, we can pray that, we can sing that, but we need to really mean that in that, Holy Spirit, however you want to pour out, we say yes. Yes. Uh, If it looks unusual, does it? we we don't mind. If it costs me my reputation, I don't mind. It, I mean, again, I think of Jensen Franklin, night after night, hosting these meetings where people what were being radically touched by the Holy Spirit. Um, I had such admiration for somebody who says, Lord, not only if it costs me my reputation, I will bear the reproach of wow. a move of God. And it's not as mystical as people think. It's not as sovereign as people think. God is sovereign. But Amen. people are like, well, God just sovereignly chose Redding, California, or Bethel Church, or he sovereignly chose um, Catch the Fire, John Carroll, or not. Yeah, there is the dimension of his sovereignty, but God looks for a person like Bill Johnson, humble man, I've worked with him for 12 years, who said, God, if you touch me again, I'll never change the subject. Power. And God knew, God knew that there was a man there. Listen, they lost a thousand people when they, back in what, 1995, 96, decided to go down the re- revival direction, man. embracing the Holy Spirit, moving in unusual ways. He bore the reproach and he was willing to lay down his reputation. But now when I say the name Bill Johnson, at least in our world, there's great respect for him. Is, um, yeah. At that time, nobody knew the guy. But he was, he didn't care. He was willing to say yes to the outpouring of the Spirit. So Joseph, that would be my word, my warning, um, my invitation. We must say yes to what he yes. wants to do. Um, we can't be offended by people shaking or falling or no. weeping or running to the altar or what we call interruptions. Well, Brother Larry, what if, what if somebody acts in the flesh? Then we pastor them. We deal with them. Well, Brother Larry, what if it's a demon coming up? <laughs> cast the thing out. Cast I mean, out. brother, like if somebody's manifesting because the presence of God is that strong and all the critters and all the demons want to come out, <laughs> I say, come on, somebody, get your deliverance Let's prayer go. team into work <laughs> and get those people free. We don't have time. Bottom line on this, we don't have time to play church. We have no time to do the entertainment church anymore. No, um, and furthermore, a generation doesn't want it. The young people who came to the altar night after night at Jensen Jensen Franklin's church, they don't want a show. They don't want entertainment. They came forward to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And the last thing I will say, people, well, Brother Larry, do you believe that tongues is the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Uh, We could go all different ways with that. Here's what I will say. There is an evidence. (laughs) There is an evidence a watered down, neutered baptism in the Holy Ghost where somebody pray a little prayer sitting in their chair and go to lunch and act like nothing happened. I don't know about you, but when when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, something happened. You may not speak in tongues, but you'll know it. And I believe all of those gifts are available. So anyway, I, I, I do feel like we need to be the people, like I was saying, who are doorkeepers, door openers of revival, who say, God, if it costs me everything, if it costs my reputation, if I have to bear a reproach, I will do it to let the King of glory come in and do what he wants to do. That is so, Larry, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to pray and minister as the Lord will lead you for, for whatever you need to do. But I asked you before this, this broadcast started, if, uh, if you had your book, Pentecostal Fire with oh, yeah. you, and, uh, you, you know, you didn't come that way or anything, but yeah. this book, I'm so glad you have it. Can you hold that up for everybody yeah, yeah, just so they yeah. can see it? This is Pentecostal Fire by Larry Sparks. I really want to encourage everybody to get this book. It's it's well written, it's balanced, it's got horsepower all over it, and it's really a return to what God poured out at Pentecost for our generation to experience. Can you tell us a little bit about it and then where they can get it? 
Yeah, well, Holy Spirit told me back in 2021, he said, Larry, I'm reintroducing my church to Pentecostal fire. That was the phrase he gave me. And really, that summed up 20 plus years of my Christian life, because my life has always burned for people to know and experience the living God. And he is the God of fire. I, yeah. I, I, I will say this. I, I, I start promoting my books, but then Holy Spirit starts to <laughs> prophesy. But I just go right back to that image that you Please. drew of, of the tornado, of the whirlwind. And then, of course, you were talking about how out of that time of darkness, God is going to launch reformers. He's going to raise That's up right. and launch reformers. And the Lord right. so clearly showed me during that prophetic swirl that we were both in, it will be in the whirlwind of revival, the Come whirlwind on, of the move of God, where yeah. when we open up once again, the altars in our churches, when we open up the church to the Holy Spirit, I believe it's going to happen is people are going to get touched by the power of God at the altar. In other words, they're going to come forward in a moment of encounter with God. And like Moses, they will become a marked one. Moses didn't wake up one day and decide to be a reformer. Right. Moses met the God of fire at come the burning on. bush, and then he was commissioned to go and liberate a nation. Joseph, I sense even in this time of darkness, but whirlwind of God, I believe at the altar in our churches, if we will open, I'll say it this way. If we'll open the atmosphere through prayer and say, Holy Spirit, come. If we'll open the scriptures and preach truth yes. in this relativistic age, if <laughs> yes. we'll open the altars and let people come forward to encounter and experience the Holy Spirit, no matter what it looks like, if we will open those three things, the Lord told me this, Joseph. He said, you open up again, open up the atmosphere, open the altars and open the scriptures, I'll open the nations. Whoa, wow. I, feel, I feel that. I actually, he said, you open, I'll, I gotta say it again, because I yes, feel Jesus. God on that. We want the nations to be transformed. We want reformers. Even right now, I'm seeing people being um, deployed, not just into Hollywood, Joseph. Yeah, I see God building new things. Not because anything's irredeemable, because there's just such, in, in some uh, some places and spheres of society, there's just such evil. I believe yes. what God is going to do is he's going to raise up believers and reformers to build alternative um, ways of expressing a message, ways wow. of expressing media. He's doing that even with Angel Studios, things like The Chosen right. or whatever. Yep. You met, you know, regardless of what you feel about that kind of stuff, regardless of what we feel, God is opening up and he's raising up new ways of communicating things and new ways of doing things. So I, I really sense if we create that space for people to encounter the Holy Spirit, they're going to be marked like Moses and they're going to be sent to liberate the nations. Wow. Man, Larry, would you please pray for us? Pray for the viewers. So powerful what you're saying. I'm moved by the Spirit of the Lord. Please pray, whatever the Lord leads you to pray. My, my, my joy. Well, Father, we just thank you for your presence here. We yes, ask Lord. right now, God, I, you know, here I am talking about altars at a church, people coming forward. I pray even right now as you're watching this, as you are watching this, you don't need to be in a building to meet Amen. the Holy Spirit. You don't need to be in a building coming forward. I pray for that. I pray, Joseph, we hear week after week of increased activity of the Holy Spirit in our churches and houses of worship. Um, but you, right Jesus. now where you're watching, I believe the Lord wants to use you. He wants to mark you. He wants to touch you. There's an anointing. There's a presence of God here, not because I'm special, but I'll tell you why I carry this. Larry, you're saying, here's the thing, because I've chosen never to graduate from being hungry. Doesn't mean I'm special. You can be hungry too. You can carry it too. <laughs> I, I do. I feel the Lord on it because I that's it. He's looking for the hungry and the humble. And Amen. listen, I know what I can do and I know what I can't do. And well, Larry, why do you walk in this? I, I walk in whatever I walk in because I choose not to graduate from being hungry for more, more of the Spirit of God who wants to pour out on me you, and Lord. through me. So right now, right where you are, I'm going to ask you to make wherever you are an altar before the Lord. If you're driving, Amen. you might need to pull over because the presence of the Lord is really increasing. We'll just take one minute. But I want you yeah. to come before the Lord and say, God, here I am. Send me. God, here I am. Um, stop giving him excuses. I feel like the Lord's saying, just stop it with the stop. excuses. Well, God, I'm not this. Or I'm struggling with this. He knows what you're not and he knows what you struggle with. Just ask him for grace.
Ask him for power. Ask him for strength. I actually believe the spirit of might is going to come. Oh, wari bo ste keri amanta. Yes, Lord. Yeah, right very now. interesting, uh, Joseph. I just I felt like an interrupting prophetic word of the Lord because we we read in the scripture about the sevenfold spirit of God, the yes. seven spirits of God. It's not come weird. On, it's just different um, attributes of how the Holy Spirit manifests. One of the phrases is the spirit of might. Right now, there's people who are watching. You you have been bound. You've been an addiction. Um, there's people who have been watching you've been, and listen, the good news is with media, this is nobody's being singled out. Like you've struggled right. with pornography, you yeah. struggled Come with on. lust. Uh, I'm on. actually talking to some women. This is very strange, but I feel like the Holy Spirit said, this Prophecy is available there. though to anybody stuff. Why is the Lord saying this secret sources of shame? And you have discounted yourself from being used by God because you have lived in shame. Right now, the spirit of the Lord there is to liberate you. And it's liberate. not, he's here to liberate you, but it's not a matter of you pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and I'm going to do better tomorrow. Here's my prayer for everyone. It may not be any of the things I list. It could be anxiety. It could be fear. It could be right. um, gossiping, whatever. But the Lord highlighted those things because they can be real right secret sources of shame. Here's what he's doing. Just, just receive. He's he's giving you a new appetite because the scripture says this: taste and see that the Lord is good. Come I'm going to pray a very strange prayer of deliverance right now. That the things that you've been shackled to, Joseph was talking about shackles before. Um, things that you've been shackled, unhealthy alignments. Joseph was talking about that. Unhealthy relationships that you have been shackled to. Here's my prayer. Because you might be in those relationships because you feel like, I, I, I'm connected with this person. I get They give me something. Right. Can I just tell you something? Taste and see that the taste Lord is see. good. Taste right and now. See. Right now. You can't. You can't taste and see of a concept. You can't right. taste and see of just a theology. That is why I burn for that message of Pentecostal fire. Our God is the God of fire. He is a Come consuming on. fire. He is a real person. That's why people respond when he touches them. In fact, there's people right now you're watching. You might find yourself shaking. That's fine. Just I lean into that. what God's doing. I, I, I feel like there's some of you, you, the tears are coming. Just Just lean into it. Um, yes. You know, Joseph, one thing I remember just coaching people in the manifestations of the spirit, don't feel like you're less spiritual because you are, well, I'm I'm not shaking or I, I haven't fallen down or I haven't done that. Right. Yeah. But 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 Larry, I'm, I'm crying uncontrollably. <laughs> That's just as spiritual. That's, That's just right. as much of a sign of the Holy Spirit. So right now, God, we lean into your wonderful presence. We yes, lean Lord. in God and we say, Touch us however you want, but my, my yes, main bondage-breaking prayer right now is give us new appetites, Holy Spirit. Give yes, us Lord. a new appetite, God. Help us to just stop trying in our own strength to overcome what only you can overcome. My prayer is, Lord, help us to taste and see, yes, that you're good, but that you are superior. You're mm. superior to the ash and to the trash that this world tries to feed us. Thank you, You're Jesus. superior, God, to sin, the sludge of sin. You're superior, Father. You're and superior. I thank you, Lord, everyone who's been struggling, God, right now with addiction, with bondage, with secret sin, um, help them know that you love them, yes, Lord. that you see them, that you know what they're going through. But Lord, may they just start praying. May you start praying this way. God, would you exchange my appetites? Would you give me a new taste? Would you give me the taste of your presence, God, Thank that you, when Jesus. I have the choice in that place of temptation to either run towards some physical thrill feeling something sinful, or I have the, uh, now I have another choice in my mind. I could run towards the sin, but I also know I can run towards a God who is real, that mm -hmm. I can experience experientially know I have an invitation to taste and see that he's good and Lord I pray you give our friends grace to do that grace. in the middle of temptation to run towards you and to taste run towards you Lord. thank you Jesus amen, amen. oh I, I don't know if you're is uh in the presence of the Lord as I sense right now but I'm just saying over all of you please receive that receive that word of the Lord receive an yeah. impartation right now. And, and, uh, I just believe God's helping somebody right now. I believe he's helping many of you who are watching and, yeah. uh, and Larry, what's, what's your website? How do we get a hold of you? Best place would be uh, Facebook, Larry Sparks okay. Ministries, 
Instagram, okay. uh, Larry Sparks. Although, please, I, I'm not a bluegrass singer. There is a Larry <laughs> Sparks who is a bluegrass singer. You don't want me to try to do bluegrass singing. It would kill any anointing. Um, but yeah, Larry Sparks Ministries on Facebook and then Larry Sparks on Instagram and then Destiny Image on YouTube. That's where we're going to have uh, the video, Joseph, that we that oh, we did with really? you. We have it the end of the year, beginning of the year. So yeah, Destiny Image on YouTube. I, well, I have the privilege of working with what I consider to be the greatest publishing Christian publishing company uh -huh. around. And that's Destiny Image and Harrison House. And and uh, Larry, you're such a major player with that. Many of you may or may not know this, but Larry uh, sometimes fills in and hosts for Sid Roth. He he takes over the Sid Roth program. And uh, I've seen images where after you get done hosting, there's bodies laying all over in the studio because Larry Stockton shows up, <laughs> uh, which is the alter ego of your your ministry thing. But it's so funny. It's just an interesting thing that God does through your life and so powerful. Larry, I'm so grateful you could be here with us today. I really appreciate you. We appreciate you and your wife, Mercedes, your beautiful daughter, and we're so grateful for what God's doing through your ministry. Thank you for being with us, Larry. Well, and you know, Joseph, I will say this. We tried to do this video once before this and all sorts of technical issues. I, I believe the Lord wanted to do this. I have literally, you don't understand, while I'm navigating this with you and hearing from the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. I got people outside. I got my dog down here trying to jump up, <laughs> trying to bark, so I'm trying. But, but God, I believe, had a real assignment today. So <laughs> You've done a great job, Larry. I'll tell you what, I believe that. Sometimes there's these interesting things that try to stop, even little things that try to yeah. stop that word of the Lord hitting people's hearts. And uh, Larry, this uh -huh. has been wonderful. I've so enjoyed today. Have you enjoyed Larry, ladies and gentlemen? I hope you repost this. I hope you share this. Check out all of Larry's material, buy his book, and not just for that purpose, but also go to the meetings that Larry and Tommy and Miriam are doing. I'll tell you, they're powerful together, and I'm hoping we get to do some stuff together soon. Brother, I love you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Joseph. Well, God bless you, everyone. Please repost this, share this, and I'll see you again next time. God bless you. Recently, we've seen a dramatic increase in partnership in this ministry. And I want to talk to you about it just very briefly. And the reason is, is because every day we go live or we're broadcasting and there are people who pretend to be us or there's different ways people are contacted. And I simply want to give you the safe and clear route for how to become a partner and stand with this ministry. Number one, you only go to josephz.com to become a partner. Secondly, you can text that keyword give to 719-259-0029. The reason I bring this up is because partners are such a vital part of this ministry. And when you become a partner, first of all, you're gonna hear from us. We're gonna call you, we're gonna celebrate with you, and we'll be praying with you all the time. As a matter of fact, we have quite an interaction going with our partner family. And if you wanna do that today, we welcome you. Welcome to the family if you wanna do it today. I encourage you to pray about it because I believe the Lord is calling God-appointed people to stand with this ministry. You can also simply give a one-time gift, stand with the ministry. All of the information for doing so is available at josephz.com or right here on the screen. And I wanna encourage you to do so. Our team will call you, they will stand with you, and they will be praying over you. I simply wanted to say this today because we are looking forward to building so many more avenues of reaching people. Remember, we're calling it a million to reach a billion. Help us raise up a million clear-eyed, clear-minded reformers to reach a billion for the kingdom of God. Please consider becoming a partner today. We would just love to welcome you to our partner family. Let's go win the world together for Jesus. Hi, I'm Holly Eide. I'm the Executive Director of Joseph Z Ministries. We're offering a special this holiday season. Both of Joseph's books are 25% off along with all of our black t-shirts. Simply use code RED25. We are also offering 50% off any of our red t-shirts. So please go to our store and use RED25 for the books or the t-shirt. And for our red t-shirts, use code RED50. We thank all of our friends and partners for being with us this past year. Merry Christmas.